Hi, this is Jonathan Clive. You know, the loss of Arctic ice threatens all of us. And in fact, the idea that this issue will just affect our grandchildren and their children is absolutely erroneous. The situation is harming people right now, older people and middle-aged people and young people and certainly future generations as well. So we've got a great program to talk with a, a wonderful artist today who actually painted the loss of Arctic ice impact on the United States. It is my great pleasure to welcome to the program the esteemed artist, philanthropist, activist, environmentalist, white paper publisher, and my friend, Mr. Michael Killen. Michael, how are you? First of all, I say the only thing that's really true is that I am your friend, all right? <laughs> well, that's from, where you, that's from where you sit. I think all the other things are true too. But you know, I, I got to ask you a question about, about this particular painting. My first question really about the loss of Arctic ice impact on the United States is, why'd you make the painting? I made the painting for a couple of reasons. One, the scientists, even political leaders and the environmentalists, they've been talking about climate change for two decades now. And I honor them for that work. However, there's still a mass of people in the United States and around the world who do not have a base of knowledge to absorb and uh, the environmentalist message does not resonate with them. So I made the painting to try to help the great number of people who, who need to increase their knowledge of climate change so they can absorb the messages coming from the great scientists and, and other people. Uh, understood. You know, it's it's. I, I actually see you know the painting, and I viewed uh, uh, this painting through photographs, not seeing it live. But I, I want you to talk about the painting and all the things you have in the painting. But first, I have to ask you a question because I noticed one thing that really struck out to me, and that is you have an address on a building, and the address on that building says whatever the street is. I don't know. All it says is. 401k. I mean, I know what 401k means, you know, as a, as a financial vehicle, but talk to me about why and what this 401k on that building is. I'm just very curious. Oh, it's simply this, Jonathan. If we don't do something to slow the threat, reduce the threat of the melting ice, all of us who have 401ks, God bless you. The damage that will be so great to our homes, our streets, the rest of the infrastructure, our hospitals will be so great that we will have to use our 401ks to try to survive. That's <laughs> the reason. Well, you, you always, there's always a reason behind all of the imagery that you, that you have, and there's so much there. Uh, talk to me about uh, the main points, at least, of this painting and what the imagery is representing. Okay. On one side, there are these gigantic packs of ice cubes coming down and smashing into homes and we can actually see them in the homes. Now that's one of the great threats. On the far side of the painting, sort of a, a dam has just been pulled out and down is come rushing water that comes down and just comes up in a big, what I call a Hokusai wave that is landing on a house. And then in the very center or much to the center is an extremely large 
bull. The bull is actually uh, inspired by how the cave people 20,000 years ago in the Lascaux Caves painted bulls. It is up there as a weather vane that is spinning and parts north, south, west, and east have already fallen off. And I used, I put a bull there from Lascaux because, you know, if we're not careful, we will wind, not us, but those who come way, way after us will wind up possibly back in the caves. And up above the bull is a door that has just opened and we can see terracotta warriors behind that door, the terracotta warriors, which I'm sure you know. I do. Out of China. Yes. And then on the right of that is another door up in the snow that has opened up and it's the Russians. And I opened those two doors because you know, the foreign intelligence people and the military, they all know the Russians and the Chinese are moving into, have moved already into the Arctic and that's a national threat to our country. And I wanna go back for a second. If we follow the ice cubes all the way up to the top, there's a door there and that door has been opened allowing the ice and the water another sort of door. And then we have this relatively large radiator, a home radiator, and we can see the heat rising up from the radiator, opening the Russian door, opening the China door, opening up the big ice cube door, opening up the water door. So that's pretty much, oh, and then on the right bottom, we have the sign, the symbol of a dollar bill, and it's being pulled or drained away. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. I probably forgot a few things. Well, let me ask you a couple of things. Um, at the sort of bottom, as I look at the painting, at the bottom left, you've got a, a, a person, and then what looks to be a fire hydrant next to that person. What, what's the imagery representing there? It's in front well, of the garage. First of all, I believe uh, if we make a book, a play, or a painting, it's always good to have the human in it because we relate to them. Uh, that's a woman who is pointing up at the neighbor's house that a large telephone pole has embedded itself in it. And as she's pointing up, looking at it, she's not aware that the Hokusai wave, Hokusai was a famous Japanese artist who made wonderful waves. The Hokusai wave is about to clobber her. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I notice you interesting, uh, as I look uh, behind you or to the side of you, most of your paintings have an awful lot of color to them. This one appears more dire because of just, it's like the life has been pulled out of it because there is really not the palette that I'm normally used to seeing. Dire, because we are talking about life and death if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was a very, very conscious choice. And in the circle where the bull is, you've got every corner, you've got the north, west, south, and east. And I'm assuming that that represents that nobody's getting away from this, that everybody is involved no matter where you are, you're in it. The weather is just gonna blow us all away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and above, a little bit above the Hakasai wave, um, you've got, it looks to be a round disc. I, I, I almost thought it was a tray of food, but, it, but it's a toilet and it's a number of things swirling around there. Oh, it is toilets. It's about four or five toilet seats spinning around by the wind. 
I put that in to help remind everybody, if we allow the ice to melt and the weather changes, et cetera, it'll wreck our waste management systems. And that's, mm -hmm. that'll be terrible. And we've seen some of that in Texas. Yes, yes. Well, uh, you know, I, how big is the painting? Oh, only five feet high and six feet long. Okay, all right. And where is this one gonna be displayed? Um, I have not made arrangements yet. And um, soon I will be talking to, um, I would say organizations that have a great interest in protecting the people, property, culture of the United States. Okay, great. Well, I know how much work and painting you do with regard to these related matters. Um, is this painting complete now? You know, yes, but you know, paintings are like people, or painters are like, I think, uh, writers of books until you have to give the book to the publisher, you're always tightening up, changing this a little bit. It's uh, ready today to be displayed at Stanford or any of the other organizations that often display my work, but I'm still tweaking it a little bit. But you would say that the overwhelming majority of, of the painting besides the tweaking is ready to be displayed. Yeah, oh, it could be displayed uh, today, but it's at the point where I am mostly now spending my energy on the next painting. Great, and so let's talk about that. I'm curious because now this one is just in the tweaking thing, so that gives you the time. So what is the next painting you're gonna be releasing? Okay, in the Biden Climate Energy Plan is a goal to build a half a million electric vehicle charging stations around the United States. I am making a painting called Building the United States' Public Electric Vehicle Charging Network and the Creation of Jobs. Great. Great. And, and what, what do you think that's going to be um, in the position to, uh, to be talked about? I would say uh, a month. That's terrific. And, and it will also be five feet, six feet long. Mm -hmm. However, this is going to be in color. And uh, I know you have been in my house and in my living room is my painting, the beginning of the end. But, and then if one wants to put another word on civilization, and that's a painting with red in the back and melted yellow in it and uh, some cave art. But it, it's gonna be mostly uh, in the red, black, and yellow coloring scheme. Terrific, and, and are you envisioning this painting to be part of a series to join uh, the painting we've already discussed today? Well, I'm following uh, Biden's climate energy plan. Um, I am painting, I plan to paint several of the elements of his plan. Um, but the next, and I plan to paint a few disasters or tragedies as I think of them. I think the next tragedy is going to be gone with the wind is the Texas oil industry. Well, I know that, I know that our, uh, our, our viewers are gonna be very excited to, to uh, see it as always. It's wonderful having you here. A great, great subject matter. Thank you for joining us at the Killer Report. We really appreciate that. Thank you for your help, Jonathan. Thank you, Michael. Bye. Bye-bye.